I'd say I spent in first year in terms of lectures, I had three hours of linguistics lectures with one smaller tutorial a week and then I had three hours of history lectures with one smaller tutorial and then I was in beginner's German which is quite an intense course so that was five hours of German a week, one lesson every day in a smaller seminar. So that was about 13 hours of classes and then if we take say my Monday, I might have had maybe four hours of classes I might go to the gym within that, I might do something in the evening with a society, um, I might meet up with a friend for coffee or go to an office hour if I wanted to ask something for one of the teachers or lecturers. And then on the weekends I tend to maybe catch up on work quite a lot and just take some space, go to the gym or meet friends or go to classes, you know, exercise classes and stuff, or I might go on like a trip to the botanical gardens or go with the sailing club to a competition or some training. So it can be quite varied, but that was my kind of typical week in first year. In my experience studying history and politics, it was easy for me to choose outside courses. In my first semester, I did one in gender studies and my second semester, I did one in philosophy, um, which I really enjoyed and it was nice to take a break from my degree. I can't really say what this might look like for the coming academic year, but in my experience it's been really easy to choose outside modules. In my first year I took outside courses in Middle Eastern history, Chinese history and German language, all of which were only really tangentially related to my chosen degree. In my second year I took outside courses from African studies in Arabic language and European social policy. Some of the main limitations to choosing outside modules would be if the course is already full or if it just doesn't fit in your timetable. So I've just finished my third year and I'm going into fourth year and no you can't pick outside electives from your main honours degree in third and fourth year but to be honest after I'd done first and second year I was quite excited to then move purely on to studying a philosophy degree. I felt like I'd already got that breadth of knowledge from first and second year in other modules and I was excited to learn all about philosophy now which is my degree. Um, you couldn't pick outside modules but you could now pick courses within philosophy so there was still that element of choice there and trying to pick your own kind of um, subject area of learning but no you can't pick at outside modules but yes you can still pick within your degree. If that obviously isn't working for you then you can obviously try and find a society that is still of one of your interests so for example if you really took a language course in first and second year that you really enjoyed there's um, societies like Tandem so you can join them and continue to speak the language so there's always opportunity for you to carry on a part of your studies that you really enjoyed. In my experience we do it in Welcome Week but it may be uh, different for 2020 entry. Um, so we picked them in Welcome Week, we met with our personal tutors and we'd already been given the options and research beforehand what we wanted to do and then we went in and talked a bit about career progression, a bit about um, the bar in Scotland and the requirements for that and then we made our choices based on those factors. When I was in my first year, there was um, a course options fair, which we went to in Freshers' Week, which was the first week of university, where all the different courses that were available just put on um, a stall and you could see what would happen. And you just go through this um, fair and see any courses that might take your interest. And then I spoke to my personal tutor and we got it arranged for my um, courses. There is like a course programme detail thing DPRS and you can click on that and it takes you on to kind of the breakdown of your course and each year is laid out with your compulsory modules and then it has say your option modules which are your electives and your electives are chosen from this kind of alphabetical chart say it will say you can choose courses A to W on level 7 courses so you can click on that and you can go through what those courses are you can click on those courses in particular, you get a kind of breakdown of the exams, the hours, what what is taught in them, what they expect from you, any requirements. And you can kind of look through those ready for when you want to go and give your personal tutor your electives at the beginning of term. So at the start of everybody's university career you get assigned a personal tutor. This is kind of like your first point of call of academic support if you're really struggling or you've got any questions based on any part of your degree which you're not really happy with your marks or you don't know why 
you're not really understanding something or anything that you might want to talk about academic wise, this is the person you'd want to speak to. Um, but you also have obviously your lecturers that you can speak to about the course content if you don't understand something. Each lecturer has office hours and you can book into them or sometimes just pop along and speak to them. You can always ping them an email and they're more than happy to answer you if you're not understanding something that they might have taught or you want to reach out to them for extra reading or extra support to try and solidify your learning. You've also got your um, tutorial leaders. These are normally PhD students at the university who are either doing their PhD in your degree or a part of your degree and they teach the courses for, they teach the seminars for your first years and this is someone who's obviously of a similar age to you, a few years older and you can speak to them on a more casual level if you're not understanding anything so they're another good source of support. There's a couple of options available, there's the Institute for Academic Development that's sort of a self-enrolment uh, set of classes where you can pick and choose what's useful to you. There's exam bootcamp, there's how to write an academic English if English is not your first language. There's classes about how to reference, how to cite, um, how to go about research methodology. So those are all things you can pick and choose and self-enrol in and do at your own pace. What I find really, really cool is the students that are there to support their fellow students. A lot of schools have peer support and PAL schemes, so peer assisted learning schemes, that are basically students supporting students. And I think getting involved with them, either by volunteering for them or actually just going to the sessions, is a great way to become part of like your school family and feel more entrenched into the school spirit, but also just support your learning. to internships and career support and all that jazz. Um, so the University of Edinburgh has a great service called the Career Service. It does what it says in the tin. It's there to help you employability and give you work experience. So the first thing they do is they have My Career Hub, which is a huge database, which records um, sort of all the opportunities that people get into contact with the University of Edinburgh with. So that may be industrial placements, that may be vol uh, voluntary work, that may be part-time work, it might be a ski season, it's anything you can do in or around your degree. So I was incredibly lucky that I had support from the career service and I've done um, four different internships over my degree. Three of them were with law firms and one of them was with the university itself. So I worked um, part-time for a year with the university's Go Abroad Exchange Programme and then uh, over summers I worked with different law firms. Um, there's also the opportunity, depending on your subject, to get involved with research assistant work. So I do law, so it's not really common, but I was a research assistant in an intellectual property project last year. If you're doing a subject that's more empirical, like psychology, those opportunities may be more common. There's a lot of opportunity for you to get involved in your school. You can be a class rep or a course rep um, and also an ambassador for the school, as well as volunteering to help out on open days. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to get involved in your school. Um, yes, so there's loads of spaces around campus, off campus for students to study. I like studying in the library. The new Amphion in TV at Row House. The George Square Resource Centre, which is sort of like a library, but it's a bit more relaxed in terms of that you're allowed to kind of eat and talk quietly. Or the law library, because it's where all my books are. But it's very much uh, personal preference. There's brew lab, cafe, and cafes, coffee shops. But there's loads of places as well. We've got student unions on site as well. So that's just open spaces where you can maybe meet with friends, do some group work as well. 